We're engraving basics today uh, with Ryan, who is our resident engraver. We did this video uh, about a year ago, and we wanted to do it again with some uh, more tooling and pictures of examples of some right. of the work we've been doing as well. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go over, oh, over. We're going to go over a little background information on uh, engraving some of the tools that we use, the different cuts that we use, uh, and how you can kind of get started in this trade. Um, so Ryan, it's just like a philosophical question. Why? Yeah. Why do we yeah, engrave? Why engrave? Why engrave? Mm -hmm. Why engrave? Um, well, obviously it adds some aesthetic value to right? the instrument. And that was kind of the thing back in the day to really, you know, zhuzh them up is they would add, um, you know, a very elaborate engravings. And there's two basic types of, of engraving techniques used on band instruments. Um, and it's usually brass instruments, so saxophones, uh, you know, trumpets, cornets, trombones, all your, your, your larger brass. You'll even see it on flute lip plates. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, clarinet. No engraving on you guys. Um, but there's two basic types. There is what is called a wriggle cut mm -hmm. and a straight or push cut. Okay. And if we okay. Go, to our, go to our super up close. Oh, super up. There we go. Cut. Super up close. So here you can see this is an example. This is one of the practice plates I use to kind of test out some some engravers, um, and this is an example of the wriggle cut. Okay, some people call it wiggle cut, but wriggle cut. So I'm wriggling this back and forth, kind of a zigzag pattern, and you can see what that does and what that looks like. Um, there are a variety of different tools. This is the, the main type of, of engraving that I specialize in, which is this wriggle cut style. And this is what you'll find on just about any modern instrument made uh, you know, nowadays is they'll use this wriggle cut style. But there's also another style, which looks like this, which you can see is not a zigzag pattern. This is what's called straight cut or push cut. Okay, you know, typically you'll see this type of engraving on firearms and jewelry. Um, you know, printmaking as well uses this style of engraving. Um, and back in the day, back in the heyday of the saxophones in the 19-teens and 20s and 30s, um, this is what they used quite a bit. And the company Kahn was, was well known for their master engravers that would do a um, mixture of a little bit of everything. So you would see hmm. some wriggle cut stuff, but a lot of it you would see would be this push cut stuff. And this is all done by hand. This is hand engraving. Okay, so there's no really machines involved in making this. Nowadays, there is machines involved. A lot of the higher, you know, upper manufacturers are using machines to engrave. Um, I'm not personally a fan of it, but you know, whatever floats your boat or fans your flame. Um, so you can see this was all done by hand. There is no machine used to actually do the straight cut stuff. Um, so I'm going to focus on a couple of the tools that I use for doing wriggle cut. Okay, again, this is hand engraving. So I'm using this tool and actually wriggling it back and forth. And that's what's giving you that zigzag uh, pattern. Some of the most com common tools that we see, these guys right here are called flats. Okay, and that is because the bottom of this graver is actually flat. Okay, there's no texture to it. So when you make a cut with a flat, let me move everything out of the way so I can show you guys. <clears throat> so if I use a flat and I make a cut with that, it's going to look like this. Just your traditional zigzag back and forth. Okay? And there's a variety of different widths. I have here uh, a 40, and this is a 41. I have a 42, I have 44. I have skipped 43 for some reason. Um, but the, the, the larger the number, the wider the actual uh, you know, cut that it's going to be making. Um, this is probably the most common uh, type of engraving cut you'll see on modern instruments. It's on vintage, vintage instruments too, but most of the modern instruments will use primarily just flats. Uh, when we get into the other type of graver, these are called liners. Okay? And on the bottom, there are very tiny grooves that go lengthwise throughout the graver. Can we show them close up? Yeah, yeah, we can show. I don't know if you're going to be able to see much with this, but yeah, on the bottom here. Okay. There's very, very, very thin grooves on the bottom. Um, and on the, on the back of them, you can see I've numbered them. And it's two numbers. This one right here is a 22-6. The 22 has to do with the actual width of the graver. And the 6 is how many lines are on the bottom. So this is a 22-6 liner. I also have a 10-8. Again, 10 is the 
width that it's going to be, uh, and then the eight is the number of lines on the bottom. So if I use a liner, let me switch my colors here. So if I do a liner, it looks like this. So you'll actually see either dots in that zigzag pattern, hmm. or you'll see actual dashes depending on the technique and the cut. But again, it's in that zigzag pattern because that's that motion that we're doing. So this are, I'm sorry, liners. liners. With so you have your flats, you have your liners. Typically, you'll see these liners on a lot of the vintage instruments. Mark Sixes uses these quite a bit. The older cons will use these quite a bit. And again, it's that, that dash or that broken pattern that you see quite a bit. Um, another style of graver right here is uh, called rounds. And this is a 61 round. The bottom of this is actually rounded. We can probably get a little bit of a, so this right here. So when I'm using it like this and I'm wriggling back and forth, you can see the tip there, if it can focus, is actually bottom here is round. And that, those rounds look like this. So it has a clearly defined kind of a crescent shape to it. And again, we're using it in that zigzag pattern. So you can see there's a difference between your round, which have this rounded bottom, which create that rounded shape versus a flat. Okay. Um, the next one we have, you can see these guys here, um, typically are called shaders. And it comes in a variety of different widths. And with your shaders, they're typically used in um, you know, the tips of leaves, and they're just to add a little bit of shading and depth to the actual uh, engraving pattern. And those are usually very thin and very wide and very kind of close together. So they're very wide like this. They can be either curved a lot of times, or they can be also straight. But they're much, much wider than your flats. Very Usually cool. your flats are your outlining. You know, you'll outline things with your flats and you'll get in there. I, a lot of times we use the rounds for accents, you know, and then shaders to kind of give my, my engraving some depth. Very cool. Ryan, yeah. can we also show them just some, uh, some picture examples? Absolutely. Yeah, I've got some pictures here ready. Uh, if I remember what, there it is. So you can see here, this is actually um, my kind of my setup when I do the Wilmington logo. There's my practice plate in the bottom there. Uh, and then I have my templates off to the top right that I use to actually get all the shapes correctly. You can see the gravers that I use. And then top left there are the, um, the tools that I use to actually sharpen my gravers. So you can see there. Uh, next one is, this is an example of a re-engraving plus some refinishing that we ended up doing to it. Uh, the far left picture is the busher. Um, as it comes, just, just it was um, very worn away. You can see you have some, some extra scratches up there at the top in the flower. Uh, the picture on the far right is after it's been re-engraved. And then the picture in the center is after it's been, um, you know, uh, masked off. So you can see the center there is going to be shiny smooth. And then the outer portion is going to be a blasted textured finish. We sent that off and then had it silver plated. So that's kind of an example of some uh, re-engravings or some restoration of engravings and then some additional refinishing. Here's uh, some, some tools that I have laid out. You can see all the different shapes. Some are liners, some are straights. There's some shaders in there as well. And then we have another great example of a re-engraving. This was on a Con 10M tenor that you can see the left there is before it was re-engraved. And this is one that these older horns, it was tradition just to kind of, um, you know, when you brought it in for an overhaul, they would strip all the old lacquer, they would buff it up, and they would re-lacquer it. So this was re-lacquered. So the engraving was slightly worn away. So you can see on the right there, after I re-engraved it with, I used uh, tools that were very similar to the original tools that were, that were done. Uh, and you can see what that looks like. That center there, a lot of times people call that the con naked lady or the lady face. Um, that is done with the straight cut. So you can see it's not wriggling back and forth. So those are just kind of that straight, again, no machines used there. It was just hand pushing. Here's an example of doing some custom work within a style of uh, engraving. And this was a Yamaha Berry that the customer um, had in for overhaul and some refinishing work. We were really gonna 
um, you know, do some, some nice, um, you know, silver plating to it. And I, what I did is I added some Yamaha style engravings into Yamaha Berry um, on the right hand thumb hook area. And you can see there's that Yamaha starfish. The starfish. Uh, yeah, yep. there's the starfish. And for this, I actually did have to custom make a couple of tools to match the original Yamaha style engraving. Here's another example of some, some restoration. You can see the far left there. This is off of a Selmer uh, super balanced action tenor. You can see there over the years, just been worn away, buffed away. It's probably been relacquered numerous times. Uh, the center there is after I restored the wriggle cut portion of it. And then in the center, uh, sorry, on the far right in the center is after it's been, uh, that portrait scene has been done on that. A lot of that is the straight cut. So a lot of that push cut stuff you see. There's another example. Um, this was a Selmer Mark VI that I believe did not originally have any engraving on it. Uh, and the customer wanted to have that original Mark VI style engraving. So you can see there are some of my notes. And I actually had to hand draw that entire design on that saxophone bell uh, and then go wriggle around. Um, and it actually turned out Pretty nice. Put that up on the fridge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here's a great example of on the left. That's you can see the everything has been re-engraved re around it. But that big B on the right after the big B has been been re-engraved. This is one of our Wilmington logos. Um, this is a nickel plated bell. And what I do is I actually go in and re-engrave that or engrave it with that Wilmington logo. And what happens is that brass underlying brass actually shows through. So it's kind of a neat look where you have that nickel smooth bell and then you have that brass expo exposed engraving portion. Pad cups can be engraved as well. Uh, this is off of a King Super 20. Um, and originally this was one of the later models. It didn't have the elaborate uh, key cup engravings. Custer, customer sent it in. Um, you can see there on the left after it's been done and that pad cup on the right is me kind of getting everything lined up and, and proportioned just right. Again, I had to hand draw it with a Sharpie on that pad cup. Another re-engraving. Again, this is the Mark VI. That far left is, you know, after it's, you know, been probably re-lacquered numerous times, it's kind of smooth. That middle picture is after it's been re-engraved. And then that far right is after it's been masked off. The outer portion has been, you know, uh, you know media blasted. So it has that texture to it and everything on the inside is, is shiny smooth. See. Ah, here's another one. This is from a Selmer Model 22. You can see it on the far left. This is before anything has happened to it. The engraving kind of gets cleaned up a little bit. And then on the right there, it's been uh, masked off. It's been re-engraved. Uh, that one eventually went and got sent off to have it silver plated. Here's another one. I got a couple pictures. This one and the one after it is, um, this is a Selmer Mark VI Tenor. Uh, that was having some refurbishment done to it and it was lacquered in black and then it was sent to me and I actually went in and re-engraved it and you can see how you have that contrast of the brass underneath being exposed. You still have that, that black lacquer on the outside. And a lot of uh, modern manufacturers are doing this where they have a black lacquered. I know Yamaha does it, Selmer does it, uh, probably a bunch of other manufacturers do it as well. But it's that nice contrast between that black lacquer and that that brass. Is there a, a coat of clear lacquer going over the top of that? Yes, eventually, yeah, it was sent back and then the, 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 the tech went in and sprayed a clear coating of lacquer to kind of preserve that, that shininess of the brass exposed engraving portion. Yeah, very nice. So, uh, and there we are, back to the beginning. Cool. So here we are. Well, Ryan, let's show them a couple examples sure. of uh, we have a couple of horns that we have in the shop that are just getting ready to be put up on the website for sale. But let's show them the, this is the straight cut. Is that yes. right? Yeah, this is, this is one you can see here. It's that straight cut design. So there's no zigzag, although there is a little bit on the outline. But within the center here, this is a lot of that straight cut design. And this is an interesting one. This is one that we've heavily modified. It's a true tone body with aristocrat style keywork. Um, so we really wanted to, to make it stand out. So we actually sent this off to a master engraver that specializes in the straight cut, you know, firearms and jewelry engraving. He actually specializes in a lot of the printmaking. Um, so he does hand engraving on prints. Um, so you can see what he did here was really did a nice job of getting all this to be very delicate, very, very elegant looking. And then 
I went in and, oh, and yeah. did my wriggle cut around it. We, we again, masked it off, sandblasted the outer portion, uh, and then the inner portion is, is nice and smooth and clear. So yeah, the other thing, before I can, why and another thing? Uh, <laughs> let me, do, yeah, no, here. But you can notice on the G sharp key, we sent this one off to him as well, and he did some very nice scroll work right here. Again, it's all that straight cut stuff, very elaborate. Ooh, this is the brass, ooh, these mm. brass rollers feel nice, but that, we're not talking about that. Get this out of here. Well, let's, um, now let's show them, a, now this is a, a Martin Committee. Yes, Martin Committee, uh, and this again is another one. This is primarily that wriggle cut, um, and you can see what an area you have to fill in using that wriggle cut, and that's the main reason why we, it's used nowadays, is to fill um, you know, a larger area up in a short amount of time. But again, all of this around here is all the wriggle cut. It does have some straight cut. The name is actually done in that straight cut. So you don't see that zigzag back and forth. It's all that push cut stuff. Again, this has all been masked off, blasted, and then silver plated with that gold wash belt. Look at that thing. Mm. Oh yes, there we are. Very nice. So Ryan, if I want to get started learning uh, engraving, how do I go about doing that? Uh, you borrow a friend's horn and just get to get to scratching. Uh, no, no, no. I would suggest in uh, getting some tools, getting the right tools, definitely some instruction. Okay. Uh, if you only knew a person that taught instruction. Uh, okay. I'm so you, you, and you so, have a yeah. course, right? You have a one-on-one -on -one course that we have on musicmedic.com uh, where people can come and see either via virtually or one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Well, right now, one person, and next year we're going to have Eventually uh, groups. A group class group available. Class, yes. So that's on the education portion of musicmedic.com. Um, so if you want to come and learn with Ryan one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that. Yes, and we right. also had, um, was it Greg? Yes, Greg. Who's from, who? from uh, I just finished up uh, on Monday and Tuesday some one-on-one -on -one engraving lessons with a guy that is a uh, trumpet bell maker at Blackburn Trumpets. So hopefully, hopefully it's okay if we mention his name here, but yeah, he was with me and we were going over things related to engraving, like tool making, tool sharpening. Uh, we talked about making transfers. We talked about designs and design concepts, uh, work piece holding. So a little bit of everything uh, when it comes to engraving. But I would suggest starting out with just a flat sheet of brass, you know, um, don't get a really nice instrument and start digging away at that, wriggling away, get something, just a flat sheet of brass. Uh, and then get, get your tools, get some knowledge on how to sharpen them and prep, prep them. Uh, and then, you know, get to wriggle them. Just yeah. easy. It's easy. Easy as pie. If I can do it, anybody should That's be able right. To. Yes. That's right. Well, if I, oh, but Ryan, no, Ryan, I got a couple questions just um, taking a look. Um, and these are just general, like if you're a player and you're thinking about this, uh, if I have sure. a horn that's been re lacquered, can I have it re engraved? Like, say you have a Mark VI that's been yes. re lacquered. Um, and does, does, does adding that engraving change the sound at all? That's a good question. That's, I guess that's a two part question. First part is yes, you can have it re If it's been re lacquered and that, okay. that engraving is buffed away. Absolutely. Yes. I can go in there and I can use the similar tools that were used before, follow the same existing designs. We can add some more if you want. Uh, but yes, you can re engrave a horn that has been re lacquered. Then, so the second part of your question does adding re-engraving or adding engraving in general change the sound? Absolutely not. Uh, though, whatever you, despite what you hear on the internet, the engraving does not affect the sound. You're not digging through the brass. In my years of, of engraving, I've never dug a hole through this thin brass. Um, it doesn't change the dimensions. You're not doing anything to it uh, to okay. change the, the tone holes or pads or whatever. It's just purely cosmetic and aesthetic. Now, what about the value? Does, does adding engraving or you know, re-engraving add to the value or the resale value of an instrument? I would say yes. Uh, there are certain models, cons in particular from the 20s, they had these artist series, which were very elaborately engraved. Um, back then they were doing a lot of that straight cut, but it would be all over the bow. A lot of times it would come up on the, on the body, sometimes even on the neck. And those horns, because they're so elaborately engraved, are worth more. Um, you can even take a horn that has no engraving, add engraving to it, and then that might increase the value. I've had people do that to me where somebody sent me a Yamaha without any engraving. I did a Yamaha style engraving and hopefully it's 
worth a little bit more now. It's got mm. custom engraving on it. Did some on the bell, some on the bow, on the body tube as well. So yes, could it add to the engraving? Yes, if it's done well. Or to, could it add to the value? Yes, if it's done well. If it's not done well, it could actually detract from the value. Okay. So, yes. So find a qualified person. Absolutely, find a qualified person. Very good. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ryan, uh, thank you so much for, for telling us about the engraving things that not only that we offer, but that you can go and learn yourself. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, check out musicmedic.com in the education section. You can see Ryan's one-on-one -on -one course, and you can also learn more about uh, group engraving courses that we're going to have in the future. If you're getting new uh, experience, or if you're new to repair, we have a saxophone basics done right course coming up on August 23rd. That's going to be with Ryan. And then we also have a... Uh, a more advanced clarinet course, day course on August 19th, uh, and that's going to be going over sleeving clarinet tenons. Uh, so we've got some education stuff coming up in the next month, so check that out on musicmedic.com. Uh, that's going to do it for right now. This has been our Wednesday Wisdom, uh, and until next time, happy repairing.